In this video, I'm gonna show you two of the technologies that I think have had the biggest impact on my own teaching and learning. The first technology has had a huge impact as well on my career. It helped me to win three educational awards and I've presented that work in 55 countries. The second technology is having a big impact on many of the courses that I'm running at the moment. The great thing about both of these technologies is that you can use them in loads and loads of different ways and that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to draw on loads of examples but also there are technologies that are free and that you can find on the internet and use immediately. Really hope you like the video. As always if you do please like it, please share it with other teachers. Love to know your comments on this so please comment on it and of course join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So let me super quick show you how the technology works and I'm going to show you some of the examples that helped me to win my awards and why this technology is so useful. So if I click on launch free recorder, it opens up this kind of technology that's going to allow me to record myself talking over anything. Now this technology is actually completely free. So watch this. I'm just going to come over here and I've got here a PowerPoint presentation and I'm just going to record myself um, just presenting it. Okay, so I'm going to get the, the recorder into the position I want it to be in, which is about there. That's fine. That looks fine. And then all I need to do is click on this button here. I'll just do a couple of slides. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're just going to look at Moodle, but we're going to give it an overall kind of discussion and understanding. What I plan to talk about today is a quick presentation about me, do some questions, focus on the training, and then I'm giving you the task for the week. Why is Moodle so hard? It's a really good question to ask. Okay, I'll stop there. Click on that button. Click on done. Click on upload. And that video is inst instantly ready. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're just going to look at Moodle, but we're going to give it an over. Now, incredibly, what I could do with that, once I'm happy with the video, is I could upload that onto YouTube, I could upload that onto my Google Drive, or I could just save it as a video straight onto my computer and then upload it into Moodle or Edmodel. So I can make learning content using this technology really, really quickly, but I could also do hundreds of other things with this technology. And I want to now show you some examples. Now, if you want to learn how to use this technology, on the screen now is a link to this technology, which is completely free. This is a really powerful example. Let's imagine that this is a piece of work that a student sent me. It's a, a written essay. It could be short, low level, it could be high level. And there are a few things in here that I want to kind of clarify with the student, okay? So I'm gonna perhaps focus on this point here. I've already marked it. This one here, I've already marked it. And let's perhaps mark this one here as well, okay? So let's imagine that we want to give some feedback. Maybe there are a few more mistakes, but we want to highlight these three things. We're going to open up the screen capture technology again. We're going to launch the free recorder. Remember, it's completely free. Then I need to just minimize this because I don't want to obviously record the web browser. I want to record myself talking over this. Now, magic, look what, look what I can do. Okay, Tom, just want to give you some feedback uh, about your work. First thing I want to say is that you're not referencing correctly here. Can we use the um, Oxford or in fact, let's can we use the Harvard method of uh, feedback? Uh, sorry for referencing here. So can you just change that and use the Harvard method? Okay. And I'd also like a reference for here for the Khan Academy. Can you provide a reference for that as well? Here you talk about teaching stuff. Can you be a little bit more explicit about what you actually mean by teaching stuff? It sounds rather unacademic. Can you put in a, a, a better kind of way of explaining that and describe what you mean by teaching stuff? The last point is you talk about topic sentences. Can you just quickly explain what a topic sentence is? Okay, the rest of the essay is really good. Just those three things. Click, done, save, videos ready what would i do well i would probably share it on my youtube channel and i'm going to do this for you let's just quickly play the video okay tom just want to give you some feedback okay video is absolutely perfect so i'm going to click on upload to youtube i've already got my 
YouTube channel connected to Screencast-O-Matic, so I don't really have to do anything. I just need to set that to privacy unlisted so that no one else can find this video, just the student who receives the link. And then I would obviously give it a title and I'd call it Tom's Feedback. And now I would publish that onto the internet. And you can see, well, I've got a fairly good internet connection, so you can see it actually happens fairly quickly. So once I've, oh, once I've uploaded that, I can then just click on the link and then send an email to Tom and say, that's your feedback. So you can see how quickly I can do this. I can give feedback to Tom in you know oral feedback with visual information. I'm just gonna copy on the link. And let's have a look, if I jump over to the internet now and have a look at how that looks. So I'm just going to paste that link in and let's see how that video is. Click on the internet and hopefully now that video is ready. Let's just play it a few seconds. There it is. Okay, Tom, just want to give you some feedback uh, about your work. Can you see how quickly you could make feedback? Now, that could be loads of things. As I've already showed you, that could have been you giving talking over a PowerPoint slide. But let's just look at um, a, a few more examples of the sorts of things I'm using this technology for. Let me just quickly show you a couple of examples of the sorts of things that I do with this. So here is a video where I'm giving students, I've just made a video where I'm giving students some grammar explanation. I'm just going to click here and show you. Okay, just something I've noticed today from your lessons and from your essays is that you're getting confused between despite and in spite. So what happened here is that the students were doing the lessons with me. I noticed quite a lot of them when they were doing their writing were getting confused between in spite of and despite so i just made a quick grammar lesson i just wrote out the rule and made a video and that video took me five minutes to make that's just another example of what i do i use this for example a lot to get my students to do speaking activities i use it a lot for kind of like little bits of mini teaching look at this one here where i'm giving feedback on some vocabulary okay just want to go through some of the problems with today's um uh, lesson and some of the pronunciation problems. First one I want to point out is just the first word uh, accommodation. Accommodation. The stress is actually on the fourth syllable and when you spell that word watch out because it's double C double M. Accommodation. Next word corruption. Corruption. Stress is on the set. Okay so you see another example here. The same technology I'm using it in a completely different way but I often get my students to record themselves speaking. Look at this example. So in this example, my students are using the same technology because it's completely free to record themselves doing a presentation. Now, this is brilliant for things like language teaching or practicing presentation skills, business courses. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to talking about uh, security and privacy of electronic business. Absolutely fantastic. I can listen to the student. I can give them feedback after they've done the recording. Such an easy way. So I'm using this loads. I use it a lot for guides when I run courses. Okay, here's the task. This is what I want you to do. So I can record myself doing the task so they can clearly see what to do. I use this in everything. I use this technology absolutely every day. Now I've showed you Screencast-O-Matic because it's a free one. The technology that I use, because I, which I obviously the video that you're watching with me now is made using this technology as well because you're, I'm recording the screen. I use a more sophisticated tool called Camtasia. So if you want to learn more about Camtasia, I'll put a link on the screen now to Camtasia as well. But screencast technology can be used in so many ways. I'm just going to give you a quick list of some of the things that I've done. So let's just think about a few of these things that I've cut. Some of them I've already showed you, shown you. We can use it for feedback, for grammar lessons. We can use it for guides on courses. For example, if you've got a Moodle course, how do you use Moodle? Where do you find the content? So brilliant for things when students have to log on and they don't know how to do that. Make a video to show them. Training videos like the video you're seeing now. Of course, I'm using screen capture. Student reflections. So get the students, for example, instead of writing their reflections, give them some questions they can record themselves talking about the answers to the questions. They can open up, for example, the questions in PowerPoint and record themselves answering the questions. So don't get the students to write reflections, but actually to reflect orally. Making learning content, all sorts, talking over pictures, talking over forms, talking over uh, maps, etc. You can create any type of learning content you want. Vocabulary practice, we've already seen. Guides to websites, when you're recommending websites to students. Yeah, all sorts of things 
uh, about the students recording themselves, recording themselves talking over a picture, recording themselves talking over a chart, recording themselves explaining a map, recording themselves answering some questions, all sorts of things. I've even experimented with peer feedback when students give feedback to each other using screen capture technology because the technologies are free. This technology has revolutionized the way that I deliver my teaching and learning. And I'm still amazed at how few organizations really make use of all of the options that this technology offers, particularly knowing that it's free. Just a really quick break from the video, just to say if you do like the video and you want more free videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads of content here along the top and you can click on any of the sections, but also on the opening page, you'll see lots of different videos. If you are interested in any of the courses that I'm running, then you'll see them here on the front page. And the one that I've mentioned in this video is this one here. I'll put a link to it on the screen now, but you can also click on this advert. If you want to keep up with my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. You get updated with all the latest videos, the blog posts, the webinars that are often free, and of course my online courses. And at the moment, if you sign up to the newsletter, there is a free 12-part uh, video course on integrating technology into your teaching and learning. And I send you a video about, one new video about every four or five days. Right, let's get back to our video today. So we're going to move on now to the second thing. We're going to look at the way I assess my students. And this has radically changed over a period of time. And it's become very popular as well. So the people that do my courses, a lot of the feedback is about the assessment process that I use, which is kind of quite unusual. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some examples first. And then I'm going to talk a little bit through some of the benefits of working this way. So I'm actually doing work at three separate universities, training staff in using this as a method of assessment. But on top of that, I'm running all my courses using this method. It saves enormous amounts of time for the teacher and it's very popular with the students. So much so that at the moment, my courses are completely selling out. Now what I do here is that as the students, what I'm doing is I'm assessing the students using an e-portfolio. That is, as students do different pieces of work with me, they add them into their e-portfolio as evidence of their learning. Now those instances of activities that they do can be things that they've done on their own. So we can see here, for example, that the students have included some word wall activities that they've created. And I can see that they've been added here. So I can check and even play the word walls. Uh, but there will also be Google Forms and other instance, instances of individualized things that they did on their own. But there's also lots of things that they did collaboratively. So, for example, if I click over here on the Google Slides, then we can see that there is a Google Slide. And if I move that down, I can click through and see all the work that the individual students did. Now, the reason that this works so well is that when students produce, for example, an individualized object like a word wall, like a Padlet if they work on their own, or like a Google form if they make a Google form, they can add it into their ePortfolio. But if they work on something collaborative, they can all include a copy in their ePortfolio. So even though they've worked collaboratively on a Google Doc or on a Google Slide, they can all put a copy into their ePortfolio. So I get complete evidence of all the things that individually and collaboratively they've worked on. But more interestingly, I also get evidence of the students reflections as they work through and do the different activities each week I give them different questions to reflect on so if we go over to the reflections and I'm just going to click here and you can see all the different things that these students been doing work with autonomy webinars uh, screencast videos word walls google forms all the different activities they've done but if I click over here on the reflections you can see that each week I set different questions for the students to do and then they write their answers into those particular questions. The great thing for me as a teacher is that I can simply come on to the ePortfolio and mark the students' work. I can see all the reflections, all the individualized work and all the collaborative work in one place. I don't have to search through everywhere. Everything's together. But it also means that the course itself can still be very, very collaborative because the collaborative activities that the students do, where well, they all add a copy of the Google form, the Padlet, etc., into their e-portfolios. 
I can't exaggerate the level of the feedback that we're getting since we kind of instigated this form of organizing the assessment and both for myself and the tutors that are working alongside me now we use google sites and if you want to learn how to use google sites i've made a special video it's on the screen now exactly how to use google sites if you want to learn more about google sites and google sites is incredibly easy to do and i'm going to jump over now and just show you my own e-portfolio just show you a couple of really clever things that you can do with google sites Google Sites is so easy to use. Look, let's just do a quick example. Let's just add a page here. Let's click on here, okay? And we're gonna create a page. And we're gonna call this page, uh, for example, Padlet. Okay, so I click on Done. So now, what I can do here, I can just immediately double click on the screen, go to Embed, click on Embed Code. And if I have the Embed Code for a Padlet, and I'm just gonna quickly grab one, I can paste the Padlet in. So if the students have been working collaboratively on a Padlet, and I've been working on that as well, I can include my copy here. So all I need to do is click on the Share button. Sorry, not even on the Share button. I need to click on, the, yes I do, Share button, sorry. And come down to Embed in your blog. I just simply copy that. And let's just jump back to the ePortfolio. I'm just gonna paste that in, and now, that is included in my ePortfolio, okay? So that quickly I can add something in. But look, let's show you another really clever trick. Let's go to Google Docs. Now, one thing is that everything that you work on in your ePortfolio, every time you do something either collaboratively or alone, it's always a copy is saved in your Google Drive. So if I go over to my insert and then scroll down to my Google Docs, I can see here all my Google Docs. And I can see not only the docs that I've produced on my own, but also docs that I've produced collaboratively with other people. For example, this was a collaborative one, this was a collaborative one. So you don't have to own the doc. As long as you've worked on the doc, you will have a copy. Watch this. I'm gonna grab this one here, click here, click on insert, and immediately that Google Doc is added into my ePortfolio. I can slowly build up evidence of my activity collaboratively and individually into my ePortfolio and then my teacher can set me questions that I can then reflect on. So this is the way that we are assessing our students and for me it really is a revolution. It's completely changing the way I'm delivering my courses and I just want to speak a little bit more about why that is. If you want to work more and learn more about ePortfolios, I've got a video on the screen now that will take you through in detail how I do my ePortfolios. Essentially, it means that the formative assessment and the summative assessment are all connected. So as my students do various activities, either in class or sometimes on the platform for homework, so if I set activities for them to do for homework, maybe work on a Padlet, maybe do a Word wall, maybe collaborate on a Google Doc or a Google Slide, they add those into their ePortfolio. They then reflect on what they've done and they think about how those technologies could be useful to them because I'm mainly working with teachers. If I was working with students, it would be more about what they've learned from using the technologies. And that is how we mark their work summatively. In other words, we look at their ePortfolio at the end. We look at what they've done. We look how well they've laid it out and organized it. And of course, most importantly, we look at the reflections that they've written about the different activities that they do. Everything is integrated. The activities that they do either in a live session with me or online are all included in the ePortfolio. And then that's part of the summative assessment. So it's one assessment. It's literally like everything is together and connected. And for me, this is an outstanding feature of working this way. And hence the reason why various of organizations have, have connected with me and asked me to train their staff in doing something very similar. Really hoped you liked that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free content and you can see all of my courses on the opening page. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated with all the latest blog posts, the webinars, the latest videos and the courses. Of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell. Uh, that way you'll get all the updates. 
And finally, if you do want to contact me, perhaps about doing a conference or doing some training with your organization, you can contact me from the website. Thank you very much.